these are still na- standardized data centers for GPT-4 scale, mm-hmm. right? Now we step forward to sort of what is the scale of clusters that people have built last year, right? And it ranges widely, right? It ranges from like, hey, these are standard data centers and we're just using multiple of them and connecting them together really with a ton of fiber between them, a lot of networking, et cetera. That's what OpenAI and Microsoft did in Arizona, right? And so they have a, you know, 100,000 GPUs, right? Meta, similar thing. They took their standard existing data center design um, and it looks like an H and they connected multiple of them together. Um, and, you know, they got to, they first did 16,000 GPUs, uh, 24,000 GPUs total, only 16 of them, thousand of them were running on the training run because GPUs are very unreliable. So they need to have spares to like swap in and out all the way to like now hundred thousand GPUs that they're training on Llama 4 on currently, right? Like 128,000 or so, right? This is, you know, think about a hundred thousand GPUs, um, with roughly 1400 watts a piece, that's 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 140 megawatts, 150 megawatts, right? For 128,000, right? So you're talking about you've jumped from 15 to 20 megawatts to 10x, you know, almost 10x that number, 9x that number to 150 megawatts in in two years, right? From 2022 to 2024, right? And some people like Elon, that he, he, he admittedly, right? He, and he says it himself, got into the game a little bit late for pre-training large language models, right? Uh, XAI was started later, right? But then he, he bent heaven and hell to get his data center up and get the largest cluster in the world, right? Which is 200,000 GPUs. Um, and, and, and he did that. He bought a factory in Memphis, uh, he, up, he's upgrading the substation, but at the same time, he's got a bunch of mobile power generation, a bunch of single cycle combine. He tapped the natural gas line that's right next to the factory and is just pulling a ton of gas, burning gas. He's generating all this power. He's in a factory in an old appliance factory that's shut down and moved to China long ago. Right. Like, you know, and, and, and he's got 200,000 GPUs in it. And now what's the next scale, right? Like all, all the hyperscalers have done this. Now the next scale is, is is something that's even bigger, right? And so, you know, Elon, just to stick on the topic, he's he's building his own natural gas plant, like a proper one right next door. He's he's deploying tons of Tesla Megapack batteries to make the power more smooth and all sorts of other things. He's got like industrial chillers mm-hmm. to cool the water down because he's water cooling the chips. Um, so all these crazy things to uh, get the clusters bigger and bigger um, but when you look at, like, say, what OpenAI did with Stargate, that's that in Arizona, in um, in Al- Abilene, Texas, right? Uh, what they've announced, at least, right? It's not built, right? Elon says they don't have the money. You know, there's some debates about this. Um, but at full scale, at least the first section is like definitely money's accounted for, but there's multiple sections. But full scale, that data center is going to be 2.2 gigawatts, right? 2,200 megawatts of power in and roughly like 1.8 gigawatts or 1,800 uh mega uh yeah 1800 megawatts of power delivered to chips right now this is an absurd scale 2.2 gigawatts is like more than most cities right you know to be clear um and it delivered to a single cluster that's connected to do training right um to train these models to do both the pre-training the post-training all of this stuff right this is insane it is. is what insane. is a nuclear power plant and again everyone is doing this right everyone is doing this right <laughs> meta meta in louisiana right they're building two natural gas plants, massive ones, uh, and they're and then they're building this massive data center. Um, Amazon has like plans for this scale. Uh, Google has plans for this scale. Uh, XAI has plans for this scale, right? Like all of these, the guys that are racing, the companies that are racing are racing hard, and they're doing multi gigawatt data centers, right? Um, to to build this out because they they think that yeah, if I if I now have you know. Obviously, pre-training scaling is going to continue, but to some extent, but then also all this post-training stuff where you have an RL sandbox for computer use or whatever, right? Like, you know, this is where they're going to, and, and all these verifiable bi- viable domains where they just keep learning and learning and learning, self-play, whatever, whatever it is, makes the AI so much more capable because the line does go up, right? Uh, as you throw more compute, you get more performance. The shirt is about scaling laws. Um, you know, to some extent, it is diminishing returns, right? You 10x the compute. You don't get 10x better model, right? You get a diminishing returns, but also you get efficiency improvements. So you bend the curve, right? Um, and these scale of data centers are doing, you know, wreaking, you know, a lot of like havoc on the network, right? And, and, you know, Nathan, uh, Nathan was mentioning there's Amazon has tried to buy this nuclear power plant, uh, Talon. Um, and if you look at the Talon stock, it's just like skyrocketing. And, um, you know, like th- they're building a massive multi gigawatt data center there. And, you know, you just go down the list. There's so many ramifications. Interesting thing is like certain regions of the U.S. transmitting power cost more than actually generating it, right? Mm -hmm. Because the grid is so slow to build and the demand for power and the ability to build power and like re-ramping on a natural gas plant or even a coal plant is like easy enough to do, but like transmitting the power is really hard. So in some parts of the U.S., 
it, like in Virginia, it costs more to transmit power than it costs to generate it, which is like, you know, there's there's all sorts of like second order effects that are insane here. Can the power grid support this kind of growth? You know, Trump's executive orders, there was a, there was a Biden executive order before the end of the year, but then Trump had some more executive orders, which uh, hopefully reduce the regulations to where, yes, things can be built. Um, but yeah, this is a big, big challenge, right? Is building enough power fast enough. Are you, are you going to basically have a nuclear power plant next to a data center for each one of these? So, so the fun thing here is this is too slow. To build the power plant. To build a power plant or to reconfigure uh, an existing power plant is too slow. And so therefore you must use Natural data center power consumption is flat, right? You know, I mean, like it, it's spiked, which is right? why nuclear is also good for it. Like long term, nuclear is a very natural fit, but yeah, you need a short. You can't do solar or anything in the short term, like that. Because data center power is like this, right? Like you're telling me, you know, I'm gonna buy tens of billions of dollars of GPUs and idle them because the power is not being generated. Like power is cheap, right? Like if you look at the cost of a cluster, less than twenty percent of it is power, right? Uh, most of it is the capital cost and depreciation of the GPUs, mm -hmm. right? And so it's like, well, screw it. I'll just like, you know, I'll just build natural gas plants. This is what Meta's doing in Louisiana. This is what OpenAI is doing in, in Texas and like all these different places. They may not be doing it directly, uh, but they are partnered with someone. And so there is a couple hopes, right? Like one is, you know, and Elon, what he's doing in Memphis is like, you know, to the extreme, they're not just using dual combine cycle gas, which is like super efficient. He's also just using single cycle and like mobile generators and stuff, which is less efficient. Um, but he's, you know, there's also like the flip side, which is like solar power generation is like this and wind is a another like like this different correlate, you know, different. So if you stack both of those, plus you get a big chunk of batteries. Um, plus you have a little bit of gas. It is possible to run it more green. It's just the time scales for that is slow. Right. Mm -hmm. So people are trying. But, you know, Meta basically said, whatever, don't care about my sustainability pledge uh, or they'll buy like a per power. It's called a PPA power purchasing agreement where there'll be a massive wind farm or solar farm like wherever. Oh. And then they'll just pretend like those electrons are being consumed by the data center. But in reality, they're paying for the power here and selling it to the grid and they're buying power here. Yep. Um, and then another thing is like Microsoft quit on some of their sustainability pledges, right? Elon, uh, he, he what he did with Memphis is objectively somewhat dirty, but he's also doing it in an area where there's like a bigger natural gas plant right next door and like a sewer next, or not a sewer, but like a wastewater treatment and a garbage dump nearby, right? And and, and he's, he's obviously made the world a lot more clean than that one data center is going to do, right? So I think like it's fine uh, to some extent and maybe AGI solves you know, global warming and stuff, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. Um, you know, this is this is sort of the attitude that people at the labs have, right? Which is like, yeah, screw it, we'll just use gas, right? Because the race is that important. And if we lose, we you know, that's way worse. Right. I should say that uh, I got a chance to visit uh, the Memphis data center. Oh, wow. And it's uh kind of incredible. I mean, I visited with, with Elon. Just the teams and the rate of innovation there is insane. This, uh, my sense is that, you know, nobody's ever done anything of this scale and nobody has certainly ever done anything of this scale at the rate that XAI is doing. So they're like figuring out, I mean, and so I was sitting in on all these meetings where they're brainstorming. It's like, it's insane. It's exciting. Cause they're like, <laughs> they're trying to figure out what the bottlenecks are, how to remove the bottlenecks, how to make sure that, you know, there's, there's just so many really cool things about putting together a data center because you know everything has to work it's uh the, the the people that do like the sysadmin you know the machine learning all that is the exciting thing so on but really the people that run everything are the uh, the, the folks that know like the low level uh software and hardware that runs everything the networking all of that and so you have to like make sure you have procedures that test everything. I think they're using ethernet. I don't know how they're doing the networking, but they're using NVIDIA Spectrum X ethernet. Um, I, I, there's actually like, I think, yeah, the unsung heroes are the cooling and electrical systems, which are just <laughs> exactly. like glossed over. Yeah. Um, but I think like, like one story that maybe is like exemplifies how insane this stuff is, is, uh, when you're training, right. Um, you're always doing, you're, you're, you're running through the model a bunch, right. In the most simplistic terms, running through the model a bunch, and then you're uh, you're gonna exchange everything and synchronize the weights, right? So you'll do you'll do a step. This is like a step in model training, right? And every step, your loss goes down, hopefully, and it doesn't always. But um, you know, in the simplest terms, you'll be computing a lot, and then you'll exchange, right? 
the interesting thing is GPU power is most of it. Networking power is some, but it's a lot less. But so while you're computing, your power for your GPUs is here. But then when you're exchanging weights, uh, if you're not able to overlap communications and compute perfectly, there may be a time period where your GPUs are just idle mm -hmm. and you're exchanging weights and you're like, hey, the model's updating. So you're exchanging the radiance, you do the model update, and then you, you start training again. So the power goes, mm -hmm. right? And it's super spiky. Yeah. And so funnily enough, right, like this... When you talk about the scale of data center power, right, you can blow stuff up so easily. Yeah. Um, and so Meta actually has accidentally opened so, uh, upstreamed something to code in PyTorch where they added an operator. And I kid you not, whoever made this, like I want to hug the guy because it says it says PyTorch. Uh, it's like PyTorch dot power plant no blow up <laughs> equals zero or equal one. And, the, and, and what it does, what it does is amazing, right? Yeah. Either, you know, when you're, when you're exchanging the weights, the GPU will just compute fake numbers. So the yeah. power doesn't spike too much. And so then the power plants don't blow up because the transient spikes like screw stuff up. Well, that makes sense. I mean, you have to <laughs> do that kind of thing. You, you have to make sure they're not idle. Yeah. And Elon's that's... solution was like, let me throw a bunch of Tesla mega packs and a few other yeah, things, right? Like there's, yeah. everyone has different solutions, but like <laughs> Meta's at least was publicly and openly known, which is just like set this operator. And what this operator does is it just makes the GPUs compute nothing so that the power doesn't spike. But that just tells you how much power you're working with. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. People should just go to Google, like scale, like what does X watts do and go through all the scales from one watt to a kilowatt to a megawatt. And you look and stare at that and you're how high on the list a gigawatt is. And it's mind blowing. Can you say something about the cooling? So I, I, I know Elon's using liquid cooling, I believe in, in all cases. Uh, that's a new thing, right? Most of them don't use liquid cooling. Is so, there something interesting to say about the cooling? Yeah, yeah. So air cooling has been the de facto standard. Uh, throw a bunch of metal, heat heat pipes, et cetera, and, and fans, right? And like that's cooled. That's been enough to cool it. Um, people have been dabbling in water cooling. Google's TPUs are water cooled, right? Um, so they've been doing that for a few years. Uh, but, uh, with GPUs, no one's ever done, and, and no one's ever done the scale of water cooling that Elon just did. Right. Uh, um, now next generation NVIDIA is, uh, for the, for the like highest end GPU, it is mandatory water cooling. You have to water cool it, but Elon did it on this current generation. Uh, and that required a lot of stuff, right? If you look at like some of the satellite photos and stuff of, of, uh, the Memphis facility, there's all these external water chillers that are sitting. Basically, it looks like a, it looks like a semi truck pod thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's it called? The container. Uh, but really those are water chillers. And he has like 90 of those water chillers just sitting outside 90 different containers, right? With water, you know, that chill the water, bring it back to the data center. And then you distribute it to all the chips, pull all the heat out and then send it back. Right. And this is both a uh, way to cool the chips, but also an efficiency thing, mm -hmm. all right? And going back to that like sort of three vector thing, right? There is, um, there is, you know, memory bandwidth flops and interconnect. The closer the chips are together, the easier it is to do high speed interconnects, right? Uh, and so this is this is also like a reason why you're gonna go water cooling is because you can just put the chips right next to each other and therefore get higher uh, speed connectivity.